It's local live. We are live at the ring with Foxface. How does it feel to be playing a show? Surreal. <laughs> Same out here. Yeah. So we just got done hearing uh, There'll Be Some Changes Made, which uh, is a song from 1921 written by Ethel Waters, which you guys did for the Milwaukee Record um, um, Public Domain program. Um, where did you first come across that song? I think this is a good question for Lydia to answer. <laughs> we were just searching for a song that, I don't know, fit with our... Well, this is... We, what we came up with doesn't sound anything like our... Um, like the original, I guess, but um, we liked the words and we liked that it was written by a, a woman and um, so we just sort of like took parts of it and then came up with the, our own music, basically. Yeah, the words are pretty true to the original song, but the music is, we took it our own Fox Face direction. That's the beauty of public domain, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you all played WMSE last, you were all pretty newly formed. I feel like it was maybe 2016. Um, what are some of the biggest changes you've all experienced as a band since the last time you were on our airwaves and maybe around the first time of your first release? Well, we've been playing together since, I think, 2011. Um, and I feel like about halfway through our time together, we kind of, we hit a, a darker theme where we kind of, we found our, our black blackness, our, <laughs> our goth. <laughs> um, and so our song just got heavier, but we also were dealing with our real life experiences of mm -hmm. just feeling frustrated with a lot that was going on in the world. And I think that sort of drove the same kind of uh, sound. And I, overall, I think our songwriting grew more collaborative. Um, I think we used to bring, you know, individual little songs to together and try to learn it, um, and we've started just writing songs together in practice or bringing like a, a little riff and just starting with that, mm -hmm. and so that's been a big part of our What's on the End of Man, our new record. Cool. Yeah, Spoil and Destroy would have been most of the stuff we were playing in 2016, 
15. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was very much like come with a song. Everybody else learns it. Now it's very much more collaborative. I tried to write a song recently and I couldn't do it without that. <laughs> it's gone now, so it's different now. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think that's a good thing. I think we've just really found a way to work together well. Mm -hmm. um, like my voice has been kind of fused um, through my work with them and I really like it. I think they make my artistic voice better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely comes across as a unified voice. So. <laughs> Well, that's, right. that's one good development yeah. of, tw of the past year Mary, or whatever. Mary's a mom now. That, oh, well, yeah. That's a big change. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. almost four years old now. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm still playing music. I was committed to doing that, um, even like, after having the kid. I think I actually came back from like, my band maternity leave early because I just was going a little crazy. I needed it in my life. <laughs> I didn't know COVID was coming, and I wouldn't be able to play for like a year. <laughs> yeah. Well, should we have a couple more yeah. songs? I think we're ready. I think our Let's audience is it. ready. Here they go. Uh, this is the first song off of the new record, End of Man. <laughs>
Fox face live on WMSC's local live. We're broadcasting live from the ring. Hope you guys are enjoying the show so far as much as we are. We certainly are. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty smoking right now. So we're going to give the band a little chance to tune. Are you guys ready for a couple more prying questions? <laughs> Uh, Lindsay, I had warned you I was going to ask you a specific question. I'm ready. Because <laughs> when we had talked um, in your previous interview on WMSC, you were still kind of learning your way around guitar, and we <laughs> talked a little bit about you becoming a guitarist and being more comfortable. And how was it, like, going into the studio this time around for this record, really, you know, honing your chops as a guitarist, being, like kind of expanding your capabilities to solo and do like even more cool things? Like, did you feel like it made all the difference going into the studio this time? Um, well, I think uh, solos or not, I think this time into the studio, everything was, you know, what are we, six years in now or something? <laughs> Whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, so yeah. Um, also, just uh, we record in Madison with Kyle Motor, and he, I think his understanding of what we want to do really helps with that because he comes in kind of already having an idea of where we want to go with the sound. So he definitely makes it more, makes it much easier, more comfortable. Um, Guitar-wise, I feel like I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I've potentially progressed, but um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's. It definitely gets easier the more you do it, but I would rather do what I'm doing now, I guess, and have it sound how it sounds than try to like do something else. So Yeah, yeah. And so like <clears throat> Motor Studios is somewhere you recorded. Like, um tell us a little bit about the backstory of why you you know, recorded there, how you got connected to them. Um, I think it well, we recorded with him all the way back to when we put out the seven inch before Chris was in the band. But that's actually how we know uh, Kyle is through Chris with the Midwest Beats, potentially other bands, <laughs> um, recorded there. And uh, Static Eyes also um, recorded there. Uh, he does a phenomenal job, and he's just very easy to work with. He's not the only person I've ever recorded with before, but I, don't, I can't imagine recording elsewhere now. I'm not sure. <laughs> that is. This is an interesting question for me, because I'm like thinking back, I'm like, I don't even know how we got introduced to Kyle. It, he was just always there. <laughs> so always where we went. He's the fifth member of the band. Yeah, yes, he actually, actually is. did. Mary got really sick once when we played in Madison. And like, like not just trying to like, oh, I'm feeling no, like, crummy. Like I was like vomiting. puking like actively all night. And, and it was it right around better. It was right around after Kyle mixed Spoil and Destroy, and he played our Madison show for Mary wow. and did, Kyle, if you're listening, phenomenal job, great job. <laughs> he put a black shirt on, everything, had a cat on it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, with two hours notice. Yeah. So. Dang, he wow. is the first member he, of the band. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I have something to aspire to, but I'm also, I'm just very grateful. But he also played um, organ, a lot of organ on our mm -hmm. record. So um, when you listen to our record, there's a lot of um, kind of background instrumentation and Kyle has a good ear. He would like hear something and would add it to he, a record. He actually is all the backup vocals on the record as well. It's not Mary and Lydia, because wow. it was like mostly Kyle and me singing on the record, which huh. I feel like kind of interesting. All it's kinds very, of secrets coming yeah. These are the fun facts you're digging for, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, next time we see you live, you might see an extra person there. Yeah. You'll know it's Kyle. <laughs> So the next two songs, you guys are going to play Haunt You and We Do Nothing. Um, they kind of seem like companion pieces to me. I don't know if you feel that way, but um, could you give us a little background of, about the inspiration for those songs? Yeah. Um, well, I'll do Haunt You. That was my song Lydia can do. We Do Nothing, that was hers. Haunt You is actually one of the oldest songs on this record. I think it was supposed to be on the last one, but it didn't quite make it. Um, it is very much about, I mean, for those people who followed what happened to Burger Records, but way before that, um, because it, I think it would be a lie if you're in the music scene listening to this right now, you probably ran into a lot of that, and you probably shamefully, like most of us, just did and said nothing. <laughs> and um, it is 
you know, something we all got to like kind of face up to. So that's what that song is about. Okay. <laughs> And then We Do Nothing was more, I was thinking about like politics and how politicians will say whatever, but they don't actually care. And then as, as you know, residents of our communities, we don't always put any action behind our words and we, you know, wait for somebody else to do something and everybody's apathetic and nothing happens. And it was just sort of that general sense, which is interesting because it was, I actually wrote it like, a while before um, any of this pandemic stuff hit, and it seems even more relevant. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Okay. Well, uh, let's hear. Let's let's get some aggressions out here with Foxface.
audience of two is clapping for you here. Yeah. <laughs> Foxface. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Foxface on local live. We're live streaming from the ring. We're going to chat with them right now again. Um, I want to talk about your recent participation in the X-Ray Takeaway Series because that is the hot buzz around town. <laughs> What's going on with that? Well, um, they were so gracious to invite us down to X-Ray um, and record a show. Like, we were playing a show, and we were actually supposed to do it um, late January. You know, it was like the one thing I had on my calendar for, you know, forever. And then a big snowstorm came. And so oh. we were busy. Uh, we didn't want to risk driving down there. And the camera crew was coming up from Chicago. We just didn't want anything to happen. So. They let us reschedule <laughs> um, to uh, the next weekend, and we went there and we recorded a show, and they're making a, a video out of it. Um, it's done now, and it's super cool. Um, we have a private link. <laughs> but basically what they're doing is they're making um, it available with a, a new pizza bagel concept that they're rolling out. And they actually, we were like a focus group for them, <laughs> We got to sample some bagels. It also snowed that day. My one thing on my calendar, pick up bagels, <laughs> snow. Um, but I made it there because I was going to get the bagels. Um, and they're going to have a vegan, vegetarian, and a meat option. And they're all really awesome, like really, really good. Um, so you can go and buy your bagels, and you can get access to the show that we did. And it makes you feel like you're doing something. <laughs> Awesome. So that's X-Ray Arcade in Cudahy. Now, yes. when, when can people um, check out your show? I believe they're releasing that on Sunday. Is that correct? Yeah, Sunday the 21st. Cool, cool. It's so cool to see some of the best venues in town who are kind of struggling, figuring out creative ways to, to keep things going. So everybody's got to remember to uh, try and help support those venues any way you can. Um, do you, what's, what's your go-to bagel topping, pizza bagel topping? Everyone's got to answer this. Um, okay, so this is my favorite pizza, and I would put this on a bagel. I like barbecue sauce, jalapenos, pineapple, black olives. Wow. Intense. Garlic. <laughs> Don't forget the garlic. All olives. All of them. Okay. Oh. Lydia doesn't need a bagel. Kale defined no some rules when he asked that question. He said we all have to answer. <laughs> Chris is going to eat an everything bagel and pretend it's a pizza bagel. Chris would get the artichoke bagel from X-Ray. It was delicious with jardinera on it. All right. I second the artichoke bagel. It was very good. Also, just their cheese bagel was surprising. Surprisingly delicious. Some, you know, put some ranch on there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. The, the cheese bagel was very, co like, homey and comforting. I really enjoyed it. Also, my drive home was 20 minutes, and it stayed warm the whole time. So when I got Amazing. home. Wow. Amazing. Unheard so of. So don't let distance <laughs> deter you. <laughs> Cut is not that far, folks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it time for a couple more songs? All right. Let's do it. Yes. Um, this is a special part of our set where we're going to play some songs not on the new record, but some, uh, some oldies here. So enjoy this blast to the pre-COVID past. Good. 
welcome back. We're here with Foxface. We're gonna pick their brains a little bit more. Um, I love reading your lyrics because you can click on your songs in Bandcamp and all the lyrics pop up and... Every band I, should do that, by the way. I think so too. And I, I think that your lyrics are intense and wordsmithy and you even throw like a record label joke in there maybe. You use the word dirt nap, which is your record label on um, one of your songs, Johnson Death Farm, which I thought was really clever. Um, did any of you take creative writing or English in school? Uh -huh. I, I took, I was like a, a creative writing person, but Lindsay writes most of the songs. <laughs> Johnson Death Farm was a, a collaborative song though, where we started like a Google doc and brainstormed together. So okay. some, uh, yeah, some clever stuff came, came out because of that. <laughs> That song is Mary very casually one day told us about her family farm where all of her childhood pets died. And it was just such a shocking story. It's actually about Y2K, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, my grandpa was very scared of the world ending with Y2K, so he bought a bunch of chickens. And then we had a big chicken slaughter the fall of 1999 to, to prep for Y2K. And um, so I was like just telling about this right before, like. We were drinking a nightcap right before going to sleep and then totally forgot I had shared this part of my life. And then I came to band practice the next week and Chris had written on the chalkboard, Johnson Death Farm. Johnson's <laughs> my maiden name, so. Wow, that's a yeah. bit of psychic luck right there. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So uh, speaking of Dirt Nap, you guys have been with Dirt Nap since the very beginning. Um, what can you tell us about what's going on with the, the label these days? Anything new in the hopper? Well, Ken just moved to Milwaukee, I think a month before the pandemic started. I remember seeing him at exactly one show and then the, the world shut down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, he's based out of here now and um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with all the COVID uncertainty. I mean, I was just really thankful that our record came out because we had just finished recorded, recording it uh, last February, like probably wow. exactly a year ago to this day, maybe we finished recording. So um, I'm just, I'm very grateful that he decided to put it out. No doubt. I don't, yeah, I don't know any other thing. I mean, <laughs> Like you said, we're just very thankful he was able to do our record at all because I can't imagine um, what that looks like right now. For us, I mean, you know, it's really hard to sell a record if you can't play a show, so I'm not mm. <laughs> exactly sure. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, Ken, let's hang out soon. Yeah. <laughs> but Ken deserved, dirt, Ken and Dirt Nap deserved a call out in Johnson Death Farm, so. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of, where can folks pick up your record if they wanted to? Yeah, Green Noise Records um, still has like a, a deal on their website. Um, we have a colored vinyl, which is uh, red and black, and it's swirly and it's very intense, <laughs> like everything we do, I guess. <laughs> um, and then there's the classic black, so depending on what kind of record collector you are, you could get either or, or you could get both, because there is a package deal, and I believe you can also get some t-shirts and um, some merch, and I haven't really, um, I haven't been out in the city that much, but um, as, as the world opens up, we're gonna get our records out there into physical stores. Okay. Oh, yes, and we have them on Bandcamp. Awesome. Also, because I know he's listening, Bill, text me after this. I bet it'll be at Rushmore later. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it will, too. <laughs> it's a good way to light a fire under somebody. <laughs> All right, uh, I think it's time for a couple more songs. Fire away.
Fox face, everybody. It's local live, live from the ring. We are so happy to be here. Hope you guys at home are enjoying this. Um, we wanted to ask you, all of you actually, about uh, kind of what you, what keeps you busy beyond music and maybe your, like your day jobs. Has anybody picked up any, any hobbies during the pandemic now that there's no going out and doing stuff? <laughs> I've been knitting a lot. Foxface all got hats for Christmas. Black, of course. Excellent. Um, I've been cooking a lot. Um, I've been at home with a kid while working from home this whole time, so uh, that's been a little intense again. Um, but I've been trying to cook a lot. Um, I am a vegetarian, and I kind of like the restriction of challenging myself with like leaving you know things out. So vegan baking is a big thing I've been into. And not just cooking, but the, the utensils I use with them. Like, you know, what kind of pan, for example. I've been kind of delving deeper into cool. that. So. <laughs> I did a lot of gardening in the summer. Um, and now I just sort of like randomly try stuff. I don't know. Um, so Chris, uh, he painted some rocks for a while. And then he's been making tables and he's been carving spoons. And then I carved a spoon with him. It's been getting weird in our house, but he's been uh, growing a mustache too. Yeah. Yeah, he's growing a mustache. <laughs> so if you guys need any spoons or painted rocks, you know where to look. All of a sudden, there'll be like a dump Trump rock <laughs> somewhere. I've noticed a few of them in my yard over the past year. So you could have uh, you could have carved spoons as a new merch thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just an idea. Setup. Throwing that out there. Tables and spoons. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you all hope to see happening in the Milwaukee music scene as we start to emerge from the pandemic? As distant as it seems, I'm sure you guys are all dreaming about the day when we can all poke our heads out and start going to shows, playing shows, and all that good stuff. Um, I guess my hope that I've been thinking all year about is just watching the burger records downfall like during quarantine when nothing was actually happening i just saw that as a chance that we could like rebuild after that um i hope we see a scene with more inclusion and representation mm -hmm. and that some some of the you know systematic power structures are are changed like this is our chance to start over um and i've been viewing that on a personal level but also um, a creative level too so i am so excited to get back out and like, I know I've changed so much in the past year. I don't really know it or haven't like processed it because I've been home alone by myself, but um, we're all gonna emerge different people and I think we're gonna create new things. And I also hope that creative um, activities like this, like making this happen, like our creative community has been challenged to be even more creative, to keep doing music and art. And I kind of hope to keep seeing that um, boundaries pushed that way. Yeah. I hope people do find a way to support. I know Cactus Club is doing a ton, just very creatively, to um, keep doing things, X-Ray Arcade, because those places need to exist when we come back to actually yeah. do anything, regardless of what it looks like. So if you, got, if you can find ways to support those venues, um, buy a T-shirt, <laughs> buy a gift card, mm -hmm. slide money under the door, I don't know. Um, they, yeah, yeah, they have to exist. So. Yeah, our venues need, need some help, that is for sure. Show the love. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we're all awaiting that day, so we have a lot of constructive things we can do in the meantime. So, all right, you guys have two more songs. Can, can you treat us to both of them before we, before we go? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Fox face. This is actually the first time we've ever played this to people. <laughs>
That was right. amazing. Amazing set. Fox Face, thank you so much for playing for us on Local Live. Can you um, get, do us a favor and go through the rounds, tell people where to find you and your music on the World Wide Web? Okay, um, you can go to our band camp, which is foxfaceband.bandcamp.com. Okay, double checking. You can also type Foxface into your Google search bar and hopefully it'll come up. <laughs> Um, you can also find it on Green Noise Records, which I hope is greennoiserecords.com. And on Spotify. You can listen on Spotify and Apple Music, iTunes, all the, the places folks listen to music on the internet these days. <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, that wraps it up. We really appreciate you playing for us tonight. Glad you got a chance to share your new record with us on the airwaves. Thanks so much for having yeah, us. This thanks felt for having amazing. Us. Well, absolutely. All right, so we want to let our audience know. We want to thank our audience for tuning in, listening, live streaming with us. Uh, tonight's edition of Local Live was broadcast and live streamed from the ring in Walker's Point. Local Live is a production of 91.7 FM WMSC, produced by myself and by Cal, engineered by Mr. John Michaels and Kneverland Productions. All video by Kneverland Productions as well, and all graphics by the awesome Ert Rock Design. Local Live is presented by Third Space Brewing. You have your home, you have your work, but everyone needs a third space. Thanks again to Fox Face for such a great show. Find upcoming guests and archives of past Local Live segments at WMSC.org, and please do tune, again, tune in again next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for an interview and music from Milwaukee rapper Von Alexander. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening out there in Radio Land. Thank you, Fox Face. Thank you, Knieverland. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>